All right, everyone, thank you for uh, being part of this uh, day and uh and uh coming taking the time to join my session i know that there's a lot going on and uh a lot of other sessions so i'm grateful that you uh, chose to to join me here so i am going to hit all right minimize myself okay so yeah thank you for joining me um i've been part of some of the other sessions and everything is looking really um, really good information. Um, my generally my presentation and some of the stuff I'm going to share is not uh, as fancy in the sense uh, I just joined and uh, put it together. So it's not as visual as I'd like. I will talk about that, but I hopefully make up with it in terms of practicality and uh, relevance to uh, to your uh, property. So uh, just a little bit about me and what to expect today. So I uh, if you, um, chances are you don't know who I am. Uh, we've kind of been on the, uh, the background of the lodging industry, working with a, a handful of clients uh, for a number of years now, since 2014, been in business since 2010. And, uh, and so we've worked on the background and worked with uh, ALP properties, PI and AL, uh, AIHP members in the, and now ALP and uh, we really love working with independent lodging properties. So it's my wife and I's dream to open a uh, retreat someday. And so we were about 2010, we kind of got that vision and we were uh, working with local businesses and we over time decided, hey, we don't have the, you know, we're early on in our marriage and we got a lot of busy years with uh, kids coming up. How can we take our skills and learn and uh, also help uh, folks, because it's always been an impactful uh, opportunity for me to um, really experience true hospitality. We lose that. We've lost that in so many areas of our life. And I think that's where uh, folks like you are still providing that. And that's the true flavor that really makes uh, a rich getaway experience for people. And it really is life changing because that's that human to human uh, uh contact is a big deal. So we specialize in that. We work with other properties. We work with some folks in insurance and some folks in auto care. Uh, most of our time and energy uh, is focused on lodging though. And it's a lot more exciting than insurance. Uh, trust me. Uh, so, uh, so we work with that. Um, like I said, we've worked with uh, several uh, folks for quite a, quite a while. And uh, you just probably haven't heard of us. We've kind of been in the background. So um, uh, so what to expect today? Goal is education. It is not uh, any type of, of sales pitch. Um, we um, obviously can help those, um, but um, our goal is just to be able to educate you and, uh, and allow you to kind of learn from that and apply it. And um, that's our hope. My hope is that it's practical and action oriented. This is not as uh, visual and fancy as I would like. Uh, but hopefully it's focused on giving you some examples, giving you some real, like I said, practical action oriented value. Uh, here's our agenda for today. Session one uh, right now, I'm going to kind of give an overview of our lodging playbook and I'll explain that more um, and where we see that going. And then I'll dive into a couple areas. Session two, uh, what I'm ca I call the promotion booster triangle. Um, and, and that is... Um, I think going to be really key to as we really, really try to market to uh, um, as we really try to market in this post pandemic world or current slash post, it's going to be important. Website is foundation, reputation is foundation. Those are all good things. I want to share this with you. It's probably some things you're doing, but I want to put it into a system for you. Uh, session three is all about um, your online reputation. So uh, that is going to the foundation anytime. It's more important now than ever for multiple reasons. So I'll share that from 3 to 3.20. So ask me any questions. I'll record it. I'll send it out to you after uh, if you like, and, uh, and we'll walk through it. So, um, uh, and as, as you have questions or things, I'm looking at the chat in the corner. Um, and so feel free to, to put, those, uh, put those in there. Uh, all right. I just want to make sure. I'm just checking here, it looks like. 
Excellent. Okay. And for those of you I'm muting, um, it's not because I don't want to hear from you. Um, we get to the, I want to get to the Q&A and answer your questions. And uh, so if you have uh, that, I just want um, uh, not to have distractions right now. And then I'll be glad, very glad to open it up. So, okay. So session one, three stages, uh, how it uh, drives revenue. So we wrote this uh, really long, really in-depth marketing playbook for lodging properties. And I'll, I'm going to put it into the, the chat here. Um, some of you may have seen it. Um, we've been uh, kind of pushing it out there. We worked about a month on it and kind of really tested it out with, with clients and, and we're working through um, a lot of this. But super in depth, we had to build a table of contents so that you didn't get lost in it. But there's three stages that we see uh, that properties are going to come in and out of that as we go through a recovery of our businesses. And I just, when we talk marketing, it's going to feel potentially really hard. And I just want to say, like, I've had really hard conversations uh, with uh, my clients and I complete just compassion for uh, where uh, you all are at. It's just, it's a total, um, it's a, just a, one of the worst, hardest times uh, to happen. So one of the goals with this playbook and others is to kind of, even if you're not a client, just to give you information that hopefully is, is valuable and helps you and that um, helps you take that um, steady action. You know, but it's not to minimize that. It's just been um, a really tough uh, two months. And, um, you know, I've had some hard conversations, folks that are well positioned and folks that may not be coming back in business. And um, it's really, uh, it's really been heartbreaking. So um, just my, my thoughts and my prayers are um, with all of you and all of us in the, in the lodging industry. So, um, so this is the playbook we put together, like I said, um, we'll get into to some meat of this, but it, as you can see, I'm kind of scrolling through. Um, there's a table of contents here. So there's a lot more than we can cover in 20 minutes or even an hour. Um, and so this is something that our goal was to get really detailed and give you the info that you need as much as possible. And then we build it out in webinars. So, um, what I'll go through the three stages and then through those steps, we have essential steps that we really highly encourage you to do. And then if you have time, any resources yourself or with a partner, take times to build step building steps, basically things that you, so you're prepared during a recovery um, as things uh, come back and as you have cash flow come back. So, um, so that, that walks through everything. It ended up being like 6,000 words. I mean, it's a chapter of a, uh, a in-depth book. And so hopefully it gives a lot of uh, real practicality uh, for you. So I will, um, I put that in the chat, you know, hang on to that. We're going to be updating that and all of that. So I just kind of give you an overview of that. So the three stages are our thought around um, where we see, no one knows exactly how things are going to happen. And it's going to be very different from someone who's in a state that is still under a lockdown versus one that maybe is opening up a little bit. And it's going to be very different for if you're in a, a uh, drive market versus a fly in market, there's going to be a lot of differences there. But overall, I think these three stages are a good way to have action rather than just say, do all these things right now, which is overwhelming and not practical um, working through those stages. So stage one is where we all been living right now. And that is people aren't traveling. You know, you're either closed or have been closed for a number of weeks, or you're just seeing the slowest demand ever. I put originally decades, but it's ever. You know, there's nothing that even compares to this, even with some of the recessions happening and just the broadness of it. And you heard from uh, folks earlier that there's others, um, other players like Airbnb that potentially are hit a little bit more and big hotels. I think my opinion, big hotels are going to be hit. Um, a little bit more um, than even Airbnb, but um, but in this stage is kind of where we're at. So you want to be very gentle in your marketing, but you still want to communicate, and we'll talk about some practical ways to do that. Um, so that's stage one. Stage two is trickle demand marketing. So that's where you're starting to get a little trickle of some guests. So some of my ins in the south. Oklahoma, Texas, a little bit of Tennessee, you're starting to get guests. 
uh, you're starting to get people, you know, because your state's approach, people are starting to venture out a little bit, but it's still very limited. Folks in uh, Michigan and New York and Maine, you're still way, you know, you're still a ways out depending on your state's response to that. But some of you are starting to get in the stage, but this is where things start to take a turn. You're actually getting some reservations. You're getting some calls. You can see your website traffic increasing. And so that is where um, it really gets um, um, exciting, you know, to, to start to see some of that action. So there's different things you can do there. And then stage three is strong demand marketing. This could be a couple months, we, no one knows, this could be a year from now, but this is where things are starting to really return to normal, you know, so people are venturing out. Um, I, know, I know folks that have, you know, taken all sorts of steps where they're still doing a little bit of travel, you know, or they're not, there's going to be some, you know, especially with um, higher risk folks, they're not coming out um, for, for time, but there are folks that are, I think the real neat benefit of uh, benefit, but a uh, unique aspect to this whole thing is we've a lot of us been cooped up in our houses and you know what, once we're free, <laughs> so to speak, you know what we're going to want to do is not be at home. We're going to want to get out, enjoy ourselves and, and relax, you know, and obviously there's folks that are not going to be able to do that because of finances, because of pre-existing conditions, but there's a whole swath of people that um, are going to be, I think, uh, willing and able uh, to, do, to do that. So, so that's our general approach is, and not to be, you know, try to be, um, predict the future, but overall to really uh, dive into, okay, what are, um, what are some of the stages we're gonna likely see and how can we match our action to those? So, uh, all right, I want to, um, I'll talk about goals and then I'm gonna kind of get into a little bit more meat with a couple of minutes we have remaining. Um, with this playbook, there's, um, I've got a couple of goals um, that every stage we wanna see have happen. And so, um, one is to get revenue flowing or keep revenue flowing. Two is to strengthen relationships with your audience or your past guests. Tastefully build your brand number three and four, build, plan and build for the future. How can you build marketing assets that help take you into the future with probably less demand and increased competition because of that? So those are the goals that go through each stage and each thing we're gonna talk about. So um, I also wanna just mention, I think I mentioned this before, but we're using this for clients. We're doing this hands-on. So this is not a, hey, these are good things that we're seeing in an industry report. We're really um, seeing and testing these things out. So hopefully it brings more re real value um, to all of you. So I wanna highlight a couple things practically um, and, and talk about uh, them. And then in the next session here at 2.30, I'll get more into detail and, uh, and whatnot. But um, the first highlight is just getting revenue flowing. What are some things in the playbook that we can talk about? And the first, is all about some some of the high revenue things. So the cool thing is, is an encouragement to you is people are planning to travel. This is uh, from a client uh, from their reservation system and that a couple from ground zero New York City, I don't mean like 9-11 uh, ground zero, but a, you know, right ground zero for United States uh, pandemic issues they're planning their anniversary getaway. They bought a gift certificate. I think that I saw that they later used planning to come in uh, September. This is for a client uh, in uh, Tennessee. And uh, anyway, just last week, they bought a $1,350 gift certificate. We had a little bonus thrown in there and um, happy almost anniversary. So people are antsy, they're ready to travel. It may not be now, but that is encouraging to see some of that. And this client has sold thousands of dollars of gift certificates so far, but it's nice to see uh, a nice big one come through. And especially for people who are, um, you know, you would think not generally um, traveling for a little, little bit. So, um, so that kind of takes me into the, kind of the main thing that I know people are putting on their websites and putting out on social media, and that is gift card promotions. There's uh, really um, an opportunity here not to you know, pay all the bills necessarily. Hopefully you have uh, some help in terms of PPP or others to do that, but gift card promotions, 
um, are a chance to at least put a couple thousand dollars um, in your bank account uh, for later. And so one of the, th obviously everyone's talking about this and, and doing this and, uh, but I think there's some unique ways that you can do it to increase the the viability of that to really increase the visibility and the um in the impact of that so the first is um consistency being able to consistently drive people to that those people that purchased that a gift certificate for thirteen hundred dollars that's not going to be a fifty dollar gift certificate that's not going to be the same purchase decision as a fifty dollar gift certificate so that consistency um coming to them is really important. So we set up um, consistent emails that go out. That's the absolute best way. We'll get in that next session in the uh, triangle, uh, promotion triangle we'll talk about. But emails, having a strong email base of people. If you think about it, if you um, met a new friend and you said, hey, it'd be great to keep up with you. You know, go ahead and uh, just follow me on Facebook and maybe we'll see our information you know, or maybe we'll see each other around. That's a different thing to, hey, what's your phone number? We'd love to get together with you. That's a direct contact. Facebook's more passive, direct contact is email. So a lot of you hopefully are uh, really focused on um, building and maintaining your email list, especially of past guests, and then talking to them. So email's really big, and then obviously listing on your website, and then boomerang ads, which is retargeting, getting people that have found you. So we'll talk about that in the triangle. Um, as well. Okay, I'm just gonna just gonna mute a couple of uh, profiles here. So, so that is so it's not anything new. But my encouragement is to be really consistent and really strategic. Um, and I just had a question on if it will be recorded. And yes, it will. Um, all right, so not having, um, so having that consistent in multiple areas is really key. I like um, to also give an extra incentive, a bonus. We don't call it a discount. Usually, you know, it's a bonus. You buy $100, you get 115, you get 125. That works really well for us and our clients when we do pretty regular gift card promotions, especially around the holidays. Um, and so the, that is a that helps people are going to support you especially your longtime guests so tap into that people are understanding that local businesses are really hurting i think sometimes inns and lodging properties get lost in the mix because it's not just down the road it's not something that you use as a resident but people are going to uh, really find uh, benefit from doing that um, and it's going to be from your longtime guests that are going to be most likely to support you so Play that card, encourage people to do that. Um, and then give an extra incentive if you want to get people over the edge. Um, a clear call to action is key and then no uh, desperation. Being, finding that line of asking clearly without people thinking, ooh, are they gonna potentially you know, go out of business and not honor this gift certificate? So you wanna be kind of careful on how you word that and being consistent, but not uh, showing uh, desperation. Okay, I'm going to send this out because we're running, you know, this 20 minutes uh, for someone long winded like myself is, is really tough. Um, so I'm just going to get a drink and this is um, not wine. This is uh, kombucha a soda. A little bit of a hippie. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so future reservations thinking now, even if you're still in lockdown about future reservations. So thinking about your messaging and where to put that on your website, on social media, on OTAs if you're using them, highlighting some of those things. This was talked about earlier in the day um, and just finding those unique things and not just putting it on your website in one place, but putting it on your amenities, putting it on your rooms, calling those things out through different parts of your website and your marketing is gonna be really key. Um, drivable location, a rural location, um, your professional in or property, not Airbnb. Um, and I saw some discussion about cleaning certifications, jump into those as a marketing perspective. That's going to be really helpful for people to get them over the edge and, and trust your property. 
staying small, of course, any outdoor entrances, cabins, cottages. I have one property that's a, used to be a roadside motel and they've done a really nice job of con the quality being super high. Incur you know, talk about that. That's gonna be a big helpful deal, whereas it might've been looked down upon in the, in the past. Um, flexible cancellation policy, encourage you to be as flexible as possible. It's gonna make a difference in the bookings. So I'll talk about that. There's some future reservations, some different specials like a reopening special or package, a gift certificate package. I'm seeing some of this where like uh, one of my ends doing a Mother's Day getaway and you can purchase the whole package, 600 and some dollars for, um, they can purchase as a gift certificate. So it's all ready, it's all right there and they can come, not right now necessarily, um, but later they can come. I just saw, we sent this out a couple of days ago and I saw someone that didn't, they couldn't do 600 bucks for the whole package. They still bought a $300 gift certificate, you know, for, for their mom. So, um, so it still spurs people on, even if they don't go for the full thing. So um, here's the example of that uh, email there. Uh, I spoke about this a little bit. Reducing friction is really important. Booking cancellation policies, I think are going to be important. You know, not, you know, having a pre-purchase discount where they, they don't get a refund, that's not going to work, I don't think, anymore. Having flexibility and emphasizing that is going to, you know, there's going to be people that abuse it. I think you'll get more by having those reservations. The last thing I want to mention um, is weddings. I'd encourage every property to add or increase your marketing or your focus on small weddings. Every property, I think, should really do this because it is another revenue source. It's a, uh, it's a um, way to diversify your revenue. Those that do quite a bit of small weddings right now are um, not having near the impact if you're only focused on lodging. It really has helped because people, I think, are less likely to cancel those and um, because a lot of this is happening. This is from last week. Uh, a client um, and they're getting regular wedding inquiries coming through. And this is um, someone saying, hey, I have a small wedding in Asheville planned, but if it doesn't happen, I'm setting up a Gatlinburg elopement. This is close to where they're located. Thanks in advance. So um, they're thinking about a lot of large weddings are getting canceled or will get canceled. Um, because of COVID, our wedding plans got changed. My fiance and I want to elope. We're looking for an affordable option since I've been out of work. Again, COVID. I saw on your website, would like pricing for that. And then this last one I pulled this morning, it says we were supposed to get married on that date on a cruise ship, but the chances of that are really slim. So this is the end of October. Um, so we're looking for other venues on short, short notice. <laughs> yeah, um, cruise ship weddings are done. Large, huge weddings are not coming back anytime soon. My brother is set to get married in Kentucky uh, in August and they already postponed the wedding. I'm like, that's a ways away yet, but they have older guests and they um, some schedule challenges. So they put it back to last next year. Um, a lot of people aren't gonna wait. They're just gonna go smaller and your property is probably super well positioned. So a lot of you may offer this really um, double down on that. I've got some benefits um, in, terms, in terms of that. So. There's more here um, that I didn't get to cover. So I just wanna say um, thank you. Um, I'm gonna open up to questions. There's more resources from Red Oak. I'm gonna copy this into the chat um, so that you can uh, jump into anything that is interesting to you. Uh, so we have a in-depth marketing playbook I mentioned, lodging, we have a newsletter. Uh, that we're starting back up. We've got on-demand and live webinars that, that we're doing. We have another one coming Friday. And then we've got, I'm offering a free strategy session by phone if you wanna talk specifically, not a sales pitch, um, just an opportunity to talk more specifically about your, uh, about your property. So I'm gonna pop that into the chat now. And if I can find the chat again. All right. Okay, so I want to open it up. If I've lost my chat window. Where is this? Hmm. 
There we go. My goodness. Okay, I'm popping that in the chat. There's lots of links in there. Okay. Um, let me know in the chat any any questions that you have um, for me. And uh, yeah, let me know any any questions. If you'd like to, you can unmute yourself or un, you know do video and and jump on live as well. That would be that'd be excellent as well. So. Um, yeah, any any questions about what we talked about? Anything um, unrelated also that you that you'd like to jump into? And I didn't mention this is will be recorded. I, maybe I did mention I'll send this out. Hello there, Matt. It's Chris Ulmer. CEO Hi, Chris. For, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, yes, thank you. And it's pretty obvious that we need to devote more time to this topic. So I'm hoping that you'll consider um, having some webinars hosted by ALP in the future. Yes, I would be glad to. I would be glad to. Um, Wonderful. I think, Wonderful. yeah, you're right. This is, it's a, there's a <laughs> lot of <laughs> ground to cover um, in terms of doing this and doing it well. And it seems to be in some ways changing by the week. So, oh my goodness, uh, if not by the day. Yeah. Yes, very yes. much so. Yes. yes, so yeah, thank you for that invitation. Um, but yeah, I would definitely um, love to go in depth okay. um, uh, in that. So uh, I'll, sh I'll uh, is talking with Heather a good place to go for yes. that? Yes, okay. exactly. Yes. Okay. She puts together the schedule. Excellent. All right, well, thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah, thank, thank you, Chris. Yep, you're welcome. Okay, any other uh, questions I can, um, thank you, Mark. Uh, Mark says, thanks for the info, info after the session as well. So thank you, Mark, for taking the time. And seriously, I wanna be an open book. So my goal is we can only serve so many clients and I wanna be able to help as much as possible. So I just wanna be a resource. So feel free to email me, matt at redoaklocal.com. Anytime you have questions, um, I'm happy to be a resource in addition to this. Um, uh, Mary asked, will these sessions be emailed or stored somewhere on your website? Yes, I will be saving them. I believe uh, ALP will be uh, jumping in and recording everything and making that available on demand. Um, and I'll also, um, I will also send that, um, I can, I'll also have that as a, as a resource too. So Mary, if you would um, email me, um, you can uh, put your email in the chat or email me matt at redoaklocal.com. I'll make sure you get those resources and I'll send you the slide deck as well. Um, if you guys sign up for the newsletter or email me, I can send you the slide deck uh, as well so that you have that to, uh, you don't have to just watch the video. Okay. Yes, thank you, Mary, for that. Okay. I'll keep it open for questions one more minute and then we can kind of dive into triangle. Okay, excellent. Thanks, Mark. All right, all right, so I ha I'm not seeing any other uh, questions here. If you have those, put those in the, in the chat. So we'll dive into, into round two here, um, session two, okay. So um, session two is Session two is all about the promotion booster triangle. It's kind of a weird name. I'm, I gotta find a better name for it, but it's something we've been doing for a long time and I'm focusing more on in the pandemic world. So, um, and let me just ask, can someone put it in the chat? Can you see, I've got chats open across the bottom of the screen over the top of the presentation. You guys aren't, that's not bothering, that you guys can just still see just the session. Is that right? I just wanna make sure, can someone 
let me know. Um, okay, good. Thank yeah. you, Scott. Perfect. Excellent. Okay, just want to make sure you're having a good experience. Okay, session two is the promotion booster triangle. So I'm going to, most of you have stayed on. Um, I wasn't sure if, if folks would stay on or new folks would enter, so I put all this in here today. So um, if you're new, I'm Matt, founder of Red Oak Local, and uh, we work with, we've worked with lodging properties since 2014. I think if William is still on here, he was our second, he's our second client. Um, I don't know if William from Montford is still on, but yeah, he was our second, second client um, in 2014 when we uh, started in 2010. I had a little baby. We went to, I went to work for Vitamix Corporation. They make the fancy blenders. And I love that being a health nut. I love that um, job, but corporate world was not for me. And I said, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping back out full time. And uh, I worked with uh, Paul Cowell at the Whitestone Inn and actually moved down there to work on site with him part time um, in addition to running this. And so, and then William uh, from Montford Inn jumped on. So uh, he's been a client since 2014. Um, just uh, talk about uh, talk about a property him and his his mom uh, Phyllis who just know how to do hospitality so that's um, I just appreciate you guys because you are just so hospitality people driven so anyway that's about us like I said educational practical action oriented you're gonna see way too much text not enough visibility not enough uh, not enough uh, refinement in the presentation. Hopefully I make up for it uh, in practicality. So uh, I encourage you guys to hang on for session three. I'm excited about um, this one. I haven't um, walked through it much, but I think it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be one of those foundational, really foundational uh, aspects. So uh, to come back to the session, so the triangle, I'm gonna introduce it to you in, um, this is one of those things that you've, you hear, you've heard a lot about websites, you've heard a lot about um, maybe your reputation, about your imagery, you know, the you know, spend well on photography, and those things are all true and important. But I think once when you do a when you want to get your message out in a special way, and you want to do that to to folks, a lot of things get lost. And there's a lot of different tactics that you can do. So hopefully this We'll bring it together in a strategy that on top of that foundation of those images and a great website that tells your story, your exceptional story, you are able to have a plan for how to promote in uh, your everything that you come up with. So um, that is what, and this is what it looks like here. So I might want to maximize, use full screen. Okay, I got some some feedback here. I like having the Thanks, Mark, for the, the feedback. I will go to full screen mode here. I like having, uh, I don't love being in presentation mode, but I think you're right. It's gonna allow you guys to see things a little bit better. Let me just remember how to do that. I use Zoom a lot for one-on-one -on -one client meetings, not for groups as much. Okay, I don't see how I can uh, go on full screen, but new share. All right, man. Sometimes I, when I, I'm, <laughs> you know, te pretty tech oriented, and uh, I get I get stumped. So okay, so hopefully that's big enough. You guys can see. Um, no, thank you, Mark, for your your feedback. Um, super helpful. So the promotion booster, this is all based on um, three primary things that I encourage you to have every time. And that is one is a strong, strong offer. Number two, that strong offer usually will live on your website. So that's going to be a, that offer is going to be a promotion you're running. That's going to be a special, that's going to be a package, uh, something that you want to do. And it's not just sales oriented, though that is the most uh, the biggest benefit of that. It could also be engagement oriented. And what I mean by that is a video about you, uh, about the inn. Um, William and Montford Inn has been doing some great videos of him just serving breakfast um, and just the 30 second video. And we've used that and I'll, I'll show that as an example here. And uh, so if you want to get that message out, this is how you do it. 
it's not Facebook. If you're relying on Facebook organic reach, it's minimal. It is minimal because um, of the just just basically Facebook is so busy. Uh, Instagram is so busy. You're going to organic reach. You're going to you have to be really creative and really on it. So this is a way to to bypass that. So you start with a strong offer. The two promotion endpoints are one email marketing. That's nothing new. Email marketing continues to be the highest return on investment of a marketing channel that you can have out, you know, in, in, when it's in the league with social media. I would say for most ends, they're getting a lot of direct bookings from Google. So we do a lot with Google and they're getting a lot. And obviously their website is a big piece of that and their Google um, My Business profile. But email marketing is staying in touch with guests, un, unmatchable. Un, untouchable in how, and that's effectiveness. And you've heard that before, um, but I got some kind of unique ways you can do that. And, and then pairing that with what I call boomerang ads, that's retargeting, that's following up with people that have expressed an interest in your property, both big and small. So um, the reason for this triangle is things are busy. People are moving fast and it's just, you have to stay in touch in front of them. So simply sending a, a short email out is generally not enough anymore. Simply posting on Facebook, posting on Instagram, generally not enough anymore because people are moving fast and there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of noise out there. And so this kind of bypasses uh, some of that. So it's important. This is important. Having the system is important because you control it. It's very cost effective compared to a lot of other methods. It does cost money if you're doing the boomerang ads. Um, and it targets people who already know, like, and trust you to some degree. It also grows with more inputs. And I'll talk about that with my gardening pictures here uh, in a little bit. Um, the keys, it takes, like I said, a strong offer, it takes time to build, and it takes regular use and maintenance takes time to build up um, some of those audiences. So the first part, like I said, is the offer of the message should typically it's going to live on your website and it's everything is going to direct to that. And it needs to generate very clear action. Um, it's going to help um, people focus on your website. They're going to get lost in other parts of your site. Look at photos. That is good. You want them exploring and discovering uh, just like they are on the property. You want them falling in love with it so they don't stay anywhere else. So similar with your website, you want that happening before they, they show up. Um, it should have a compelling copy. It shouldn't just be the offer, but it should uh, evoke some sense of emotion and have a clear call to action uh, with little, little friction, like I mentioned. That second piece is the email marketing. And don't worry, I'm gonna tie this together with an example um, and, and talk about that. The second piece is email marketing utilizing um, the inverse pyramid uh, to generate action. So I'm gonna pop down here to an example and it's cut off, but every email we have a main section that has an image, a title, and then text that slowly or quickly talks about it and generates them towards action. I've cut it off, but there's always a button at the bottom, maybe sometimes two buttons that generate them towards action. So that's, you're gathering their interest and then you're directing it towards an action. And usually that's a click in an email. That's a click over to the website. So it's really important because uh, people are busy, like we said, and they're going to go past it if you don't ask them to take action. Um, and, and the inverse pyramid is a really good, quick way to do that. Um, the second piece is starting with the language that you use from the offer page and trim down. You want to tell a story more important, even than getting them to take quick action is for them to be able to you to brand yourself and tell that story because you're in it for the long game so you don't want to bypass and shortcut to try to get an extra sale where you're going to turn off people that are looking for a unique uh, experience with you so um, making sure that you're telling that story is, is good and then obviously you want to track your opens and your clicks compared to other campaigns and then adjust see what's working what types of things and there's simple ways to do that the last thing I want to say is um, resend your campaigns. People are busy. So when you do an email campaign, resend, I would, we'd usually do three to seven days later. And that, you know, some people say, well, what if you, you know, if someone, you know, is annoyed, like we've been doing this for a number of years for clients and we always do it 
in a, you know, allow time for them to open it. But if they haven't opened it in three, four or five days, they're not opening it, you know, um, one, you know, 99 out of 100 times. Resend that. You're going to get in front of a lot more people. We've, we've seen hundreds to sometimes an extra thousand people are able to open our email campaigns because we just resend it to them. Change the subject line and resend it to people who didn't open the email. So uh, that's a little controversial, but it's going to increase the amount of visibility that you get in, in your campaigns. And it, it's not going to annoy people. Very, very rarely you're going to have any trouble um, with folks. Um, you know, look at your email, it's overflowing. Um, so, you know, take the time to write a good email and then make sure it's seen. The third piece to this is boomerang ads. And I call that that because you throw boomerang and it comes back to you. What you want is people hit your website and most are gone. After a couple minutes at best, they're gone and they're moving on. That, there's a number of reasons for that. But boomerang ads, I think, are a great tool in the toolbox, especially for a property that is focused on direct bookings and is focused on the long game of um, really um, encouraging that um, they're encouraging uh, long-term patronage of their property. They're not just focused on that quick one and done. And so um, you've probably done some Facebook. You've probably boosted, you know, on Facebook here or there. But this is... It takes a little bit of setup and um, it's totally possible for you to do it. Um, and I can give you some, some more specific pointers with a little bit uh, more time, but you can set up so that your website traffic up to the past six months on Facebook and Instagram, you can target those people. So who better to target than the people that have already been on your site? And maybe for some reason they didn't connect, but you now have this ready group of people that um, to different extents already know about you. They've already seen your information and you can, get more segmented than that because it's going to be different from someone who reads a blog post versus someone who has been all over your amenities and your uh, social um, things. Right. Oh, and Carolyn said, uh, Carolyn just asked, are the offers are packages? Um, and they can be an offer. So I didn't kind of get into uh, too much depth on that, but you have Every inn, I believe, should have ongoing packages that they offer that are based around life events. You should also have um, you should also have seasonal specials that could be either have a discount involved in them if it's a lower season, um, and you pad that discount through a package. Um, um, thanks for I'll answer that just in question in a second, Peggy. Um, but the the uh, you should you should have things built around life events you should things have things built around seasonality and events in your area even those are down you think of fall in the smoky mountains or fall in vermont those are big deals that um you can build packages around like our uh an inn in the smoky mountains they um they are usually booked solid on the weekends. So we do a midweek package. We put in a little discount in that, but that's not the focus. The focus is more on just encouraging them to stay midweek um, in there. So life events, seasonality, it could also be last minute uh, specials, you know, say a big group cancels and you have a big gaping hole on a weekend. That's another offer. It could also be very simply, hey, we're open, we're back open. That could be your message that you're trying to get across and you're supporting that. Stay small stay safe. That could be a message. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a package or revenue driven. So, um, so yeah, that, um, there, there's flexibility within that. So this is kind of the framework that you can plug a lot of different things into. Um, so just to kind of finish up with the boomerang ads, cause this may be kind of newer to you, but there's website traffic you can target. There's social interaction. So if someone has watched a video, if they've liked, messaged you, commented, they've interacted in some way for the next year, you can target them. Um, you can build an audience that has them and then you target them with an ad. And then obviously your, the emails. So you have, you're sending your emails. People typically need uh, seven touch points before they really make a big decision. Well, that's another option. They got your email, they see an ad on Facebook, they see it on Instagram, they get another email. They're starting to build those touch points in that top of mind presence with them. So that that can be really, really good. 
Okay, so uh, I saw Peggy, thanks for the question, asked about budget and cost for retargeting. Um, I would say there's two types of retargeting. There's some ongoing stuff. So if people have visited, if you can get into a longer like ongoing program or you can just have those set aside for when you're doing promotions. So I would say um, you, can, you can get away with a $5 a day ongoing package. So 150 bucks a month, you could do less than that. Um, I think you'll find as you invest more and have more visibility, you'll, you'll get more ROI out of it. Um, but really you could spend as little as you wanted and you can also boost for different times. So for instance, um, we, um, let's see here, I'll come back to this, but this is a, um, and Carolyn, I think this is um, in your neck of the woods, a client of ours, a country in at Camden Rockport. So I know uh, your kind of uh, area anyway. So, um, and beautiful area. So this is, you know, this ad that out there, this can get uh, boosted for a short period of time. You know, we can boost this for a week or two and then let it go. So there's different, all that to say is there's different ways. You really don't have to have too small of a budget. I would say for effect, I'd love to see a hundred, between a hundred and $300 um, a month given, but for some, for you right now, that may not be possible and it may not be uh, practical. You can't go too small. Okay, I wanna give you just an example and then I wanna to get to, uh, uh, to any questions here. So um, here's an example where we're working on with uh, gift certificates. You can plug, like I said, anything into this. One is the offer page. You want that to be clear and on the website. And I just cut this off. There's images involved with this. I just wanted to try to fit, be able to fit this in. Uh, for you. So there's the offer page. You want to build that typically on your website because it allows you to change things up and then you're going to, you know, uh, connect people back into that. Um, think about it in, the, in terms of this hub and spoke model. Your website is the hub and then you want to reach as many spokes as possible with your messaging. But you want them all to come back to your website. In this case, your offer page. So an offer page, this could be, like I said, a package, a special um, it could just be a message. Hey, we're open. We're available uh, for you. And uh, so it starts with that, an email. Um, it comes back, like I said, the, the email and then the call to action is for them. It can be to call. It could be to purchase on your, uh, on your um, reservation system, or it could be just to, uh, uh, go to your website and learn more. There's different um, scenarios there, but that email needs to be clear and um, have a great, really a great image um, uh, attached to it and connected with it. So that email and then having a social ad. So then in this case, this is Facebook and it's got, as you can see, it's got the special, but we've also got, you know, an update. People are going to be wondering what is happening. So thank, you know, making sure that you're not, um, you're being gentle with it and also that you're connecting them back to, um, hey, here's, how you, here's why you can trust us. Uh, so as it comes down to it, you know, that whole system, you can plug anything in, but those are the three main areas. And it works for engagement as well. Like I said, it's not just about offers. Um, this is for the Montford Inn. And um, this is a video, like I said, we promoted that out through email as well and got a ton of extra exposure and think about who's on your email list. It's very, um, it's people, a lot of past guests, and we'll talk about that in the next um, session, but who's, who's your best customer? Who's your best future customer? It's your past customer. People that already know you already trust, you already like it and they're going to come back. This is, that is that I guess that is really the whole point of this is you are, cultivating people who are already um, you're cultivating people who already know, like, and trust you rather than just reaching out to new ones. And how are you going to recover the quickest from this uh, pandemic? It's going to be reaching out to all of those guests that you have that direct relationship with. So get on OTAs, get your, um, you know, get your uh, visibility on Airbnb, you know, do all of those things, but have this system in place so that as they come in and become regulars and become loyal, 
then you can reach them because they are your best future guest, um, hands down. And that's going to be the quickest way to recover. So this is my garden um, or what will be. So I've got a garden over here. And then, um, so I, I, I love gardening, I should say. And um, I could talk for hours about it. Um, I think it gets me away from the computer and something really hands-on. So on the left is my uh, all of my plants that are waiting to go in until we get through a 25 degree night here in a couple of Friday night. Once that is happens, the one on the right you see is all this yard mess of, of stuff. That is where my all that orchard stuff, these, these are blueberries, these are goji berries, strawberries, blueberries, I say that, um, pawpaws, uh, cold hardy kiwis, uh, all the all the stuff, josta berries, probably never heard of those. I hadn't either, but I bought them because they look cool. So anyway, this is all going to turn into that. And I love gardening. And just think about this system as your own marketing garden, as you build up more website traffic, as you build up more emails, as you get, as you have guests that jump in uh, with you, you're building, um, you're building those assets, you're growing that garden. This year, I'm not gonna get a lot of fruit from that orchard in that garden, but next year, everything is gonna get better and more, uh, and, and more uh, flavorful, it's gonna get more, um, it's gonna need less input. So build this garden now um, and, and, and um, water it, fertilize it, you're gonna, you're gonna be really glad. Uh, that that you did, um, and this this whole triangle will be really, um, I think, beneficial for you. So, all right, I'm looking at questions. So yeah, let's open up for questions here. If you want to uh, unmute yourself and ask a question, you can drop it in the chat. Um, I do see one from uh, Carolyn says thank you, thank you, Carolyn, uh, for that, and. Oh, good question, Carolyn. So are you, she says, are you suggesting a two-prong approach, one offer that is unique for past guests and then boomerang ads for new? Uh, I would say, I would focus. Um, you could definitely do that, but I would say at first I would focus and do it for both. I guess what I was trying to say is most, you're going to have a lot of past guests in this garden, this triangle of garden you know that you have and focus on that is going to be um good so i would do typically one offer and then just blast it out to all of those places not distinguishing between past guest and um and uh you know potentially someone who's heard of you but hasn't stayed with you yet now you can get more um advanced and and be able to um you can get more advanced and do a past guest offer, you know, and I would do that. I would probably do that as an email and not just a, an ad because it, the, it can get a little advanced unless you have someone helping you to, to set that up uh, on reaching those specifically those past guests. But yes, I would test it and, um, and, and track it through Google Analytics so you can see the effectiveness and through your reservation system. Uh, Mary asked, do you think Facebook or Instagram ads are more effective than Google AdWords? I, I don't want to, or, you know, or she says certainly cannot do both. Um, great. Uh, that, that's a great question. I would say I would start with boomerang ads first, because you're probably getting website traffic. You probably have people interacting on Facebook and you definitely have emails of your past guests. Those are going to be the best opportunities. So start with that. I th Google AdWords is great for getting in front of new people. And you can retarget with Google AdWords with their display network, too expensive compared to Facebook. I wouldn't worry about that. I would, so if you're choosing between one or the other, do, do boomerang ads uh, to, uh, to folks that already know about you. It's always gonna be better to reach out to people that know about you. Um, than, than those on Google. Google is great. We drive a lot of traffic, a lot of bookings through Google ads, but it's expensive. And so I would, I would definitely, if you're between one or the other, definitely do um, the boomerang ads. Okay, did I have uh, a question? Uh, alive? Someone unmute themselves. Okay, I've 
got another one in chat, but I just wanted if anyone had a question. Okay, I'm reading. Uh, Julie asked, when you say boomerang, do you mean that they boomerang back to the website? What do you recommend for links to website from Instagram posts? So I do mean that they boomerang. So your goal, there's a couple different uh, ways to do it, but the goal is for them to come back to your site, whether they, you know, what, no matter what kind of audience you have, whether they, you're reaching them because they, they um, liked you on Facebook or they visit your website. But yeah, the goal is for them to come back to that hub, which is your website and your offer page. Um, uh, if, if Julie, if you could clarify, what do you, she says, what do you recommend for links to website from Instagram posts? I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Maybe just missing that. You all, she also asked, do you mean retargeting ads when you say boomerang or any kind of ad that has a link back? Yes, retargeting. Boomerang is more visual. A lot of folks don't know retargeting, so I, it, it is retargeting. Um, and it's being creative with that. It's not just website visitors, people that you have their email, people that like you on Facebook, um, that kind of thing. Uh, do we use a program for Instagram since the link can't be in the post? Uh, we we scheduled, so Facebook owns Instagram, so you can do a link um, when you're running it as an ad in Instagram or you're boosting the existing post you have out there. Um, but yeah, so I would do add it as a placement inside of Facebook advertising um, and then they will allow the link. So they don't want links unless you pay them for it. So <laughs> it's ridiculous, but you play the, you play the game with these guys because uh, that's where people are. So hopefully that answers. If you have more questions, Julian, I'm not kind of getting to, or you have a specific situation, feel free to email me, matt at redoaclocal.com. Okay. Uh, I see someone on here has, uh, they're, they're unmuted. Uh, if you had a question, feel free um, to, to ask that, or you can put yourself on video even, um, or I can, I can do that. This is question time and we'll jump into the last session. Man, things are going fast. Um, uh, so, We'll jump into that uh, here in just about two minutes. I just want to make sure this is kind of a new thing and um, yeah. Do we have a question? Okay. Okay. Um, most of you, a lot, several of you have been here, but I'm going to put this in the, the chat. There's more resources that we have from Red Oak, and I believe that we'll have, we'll have the recordings of this that I can send to you. I, it sounds like it'll also be available on ALP's Development Day website on demand, so that is good as well. And I can share the, the slides with you as well, so you can study those. So I'm going to put in the chat here a couple of Links, you, if, and you saw this after the first session if you were here, um, and that just gives you some links. So we've got webinars um, that we do, um, educational, it's all education. Um, we've got a newsletter that we send out and that we're restarting and sending out. And then um, everything, a lot of these things are more in depth from a thing, uh, a piece that we wrote called the three stage marketing playbook for lodging properties to survive then thrive during the uh, COVID pandemic, so dif during and after. So if you weren't here in the first session, this is a uh, in-depth, I call it a playbook because it's not just a blog post, it's in-depth, a lot of information. We know that uh, we can only help so many folks hands-on, so it's sharing a lot of really practical information, and we even had a table of contents so you can reference it. We're updating it as we're learning, and we're trying to be really free with the information so that you have those resources. So it's at every stage, um, and you can read more about what the, we see those stages being. You can see essential steps and building steps, things that we would recommend you do immediately during the stage and then building if you have the resources, the time, 
and cash flow uh, if you can build towards that because as strong demand enters having um, assets that you've you've built out and are ready including the triangle um, are, are really key so um, so yeah so all right so yeah re, so um, use that and uh, enjoy that and uh, let me know what questions you have. Mary asked, are we, I'm, are we on Instagram? As a company, no. We do target with Instagram ads, um, but that leads people right back to the website. Um, so we are, we are not. I would encourage any property to. We don't find a ton of value um, in it as a boring marketing agency. You guys are exciting, you have cool pictures. So we probably will at some point, but we're a small team, so we haven't added that. So. Thank you, though, um, for, for asking. So uh, we do have a Facebook page, um, but you can uh, email and our website is usually the best ways where you can get value from us. Okay. All right. As I said before, this is uh, not wine. Um, although it is, we are still uh, uh, in in Michigan under lockdown. So, um, but this is just kombucha with with uh, grape soda. I am what I'm what I call a health hippie, <laughs> like garden and um, some some of those kinds of things. So, anyway. Okay, let's dive in. Last session here. Um, thank you guys for your participation. This has made it fun. I wasn't, um, ALP has been working really hard to get this out there, but I know it's all come together quickly. And I joined uh, just a couple days ago. And um, anyway, uh, seeing the questions and the participation has been fun. So exciting. So um, thank you for your presence. So if you haven't been with me, uh, Session number three, your online uh, reputation. This is one of those foundation points that it doesn't take a rocket science to, uh, to know, for, at least for hotels, that this is really a big, big deal. Um, TripAdvisor has been huge for a number of years. But what I'd like to do is talk about uh, kind of a broader picture of your reputation and some of the goals, um, some of the value that's there, and then talk about why um, why is extra important in, in this um, situation we find ourselves with dealing with a post, a current and post, you know, hopefully soon post pandemic world and where people are going to be, you know, legitimately changed by, by some of this. So your online reputation, that forms the foundation that um, when it, your online reputation is good, you know, it, everything flows easier. You get more guests more easily when it's not good or it's not up to where it could be. Um, it, it really um, makes a makes a big difference. And it's a difference a lot. I find a lot of small businesses, a lot of um, a lot of small businesses and a lot of um, ho hotels, independent lodging, they um, they see the value of it. And uh, I lost my train of thought. Excuse me. Another drink of get a little boost. All right, we're going to dive in. <laughs> um, like looking down at the chat and getting distracted. So, okay, so it's it's value. What I was, I guess, what I was saying is basically you ha can have a good offline reputation where people love you and you just never ask them to share that publicly. And in our world, that is where the gold is. So, um, yeah, so that that's where that's where you can really. Um, get a lot of uh, a lot of value. So if you haven't been with me, Red Oak Local have been serving the independent lodging to uh, communicate their unique value, tell an exceptional story, and take smart action. We've been doing that since 2014, um, in business since 2010. We work with uh, lots of different folks, including some really great ones that have been with us since 2014. Um, shout out to William Montford Inn if you're still on here, and uh, lots of other uh, folks that. Uh, we love having long-term relationships. That's where um, it's a win-win. So we've been around kind of in the background, not really a visible um, for, for a number of reasons, um, but we're 
Um, our team is, is small, but really dedicated. And uh, so that's a little bit about us. We do work with other businesses. The lion's share of what we do is independent lodging inns. And we work with right now properties between five rooms and 80 rooms <clears throat> in, in different ways. So uh, everything is we're gonna talk about is educational, no sales pitch, practical, action oriented. It won't be as fancy or as put together as I like, just kind of joined and put some of this together. And, uh, and so it's gonna be more text than I'd like. So I'll, um, hopefully I make up for that in terms of value. So, okay. All right, so I wanna talk about this. I'm gonna come back to this cause I wanna give you a little uh, visual here. Okay. So this is how people think that it typically works in their business um, when someone hears about them. They think, oh, folks hear about me as part of an association. They get a referral, those are good. They hear about me on the TV, website, Facebook, Google, um, newspaper, I guess, you know, could still be a thing. Um, this is how people think that it works, that they hear about me and they visit my business. They visit me on the website, they call me up, you know, there's a one-to-one, -one, you know, boom, direct action. And one of the benefits, one of the things about marketing that I, I think is really um, important is that this is how it actually works. There's an intermediary step with the online world that is um, really uh, a big deal. And that is, they may hear about you through all of those places and there's a lot of different ways to get eyeballs on your business but people will always, and you, in lodging industry know this better than others, but there's still, um, I wanna emphasize that people still do a Google search for you. Um, they might hear a referral, but they're not gonna just call you up. They're gonna check out your website, look at photos, and they're gonna be specifically looking for what is your reputation? And then <clears throat> they may go to your business, they may go to a competitor, they might do nothing. And I would say for lodging, you could put in, they may go to an OTA you know, which I would say is a competitor in a lot of cases, you know, so that reputation is really important because it's not just that, oh, I heard about them. That's great. Folks look at tons of different websites when they're planning their travel and that inter intermediary step. So that's a big marketing um, aspect. Um, but why feedback and reviews? Why is this one of the foundational things as you come into a post pandemic world over the next couple of months, what is the, the big deal? So um, the first, and I think the most important thing is your best future guests, who are they? They're your past guests, people that already stayed with you. They already know you, they like you, they trust you. Not everyone, but I'm, if you're good at what you do, and I know mo all of you are, um, because you've probably been doing this for a while and you figured out how to really please people, they're going to be like very likely to come back. Those are your best future guests, especially in the world. We just talked about a lot of that. The second best group of customer is referrals from those past guests. So those utilizing those past guests to give you referrals to new guests, those are, that's your best, second best group of future customers, future guests. And in our world now, the referrals, direct, you know, texting, letting them, someone else know, oh, you would love it. You're, we went as a couple getaway, you would love this as a couple getaway. But also, what is their online experience? Did they post this to TripAdvisor? Did they post this to Google? So those are your two best groups. So if you can dial those in over the next couple of months and really focus on those, you, I believe, will um, be for, way further out. You're not gonna, you can't, um, you know, you can't market yourselves out of a pandemic is the line I heard this morning. And that is true to an extent, but with increased competition, you really can um, stand out and reaching out to those two groups repeatedly, consistently, and in a really high value way is gonna be your best ticket. And so in that case, I think that you can uh, really set yourself up for success. Number two is, is it helps you create an exceptional property. You're getting that feedback from your guests. is uh, gives you that feedback to be able to create an exceptional property. And I see this all the time. It helps you craft an exceptional story about your property. So it's not just um, about what you say, but when you can weave in the nuance of what guests tell you is important to them, then all of a sudden 
that helps you really craft a, a story that people kind of really lean into. They really get interested in. Um, we can talk more about that. Also, um, I also heard the comment this morning in a presentation that if you get one bad TripAdvisor review on in this world that says you did not clean, you were not a clean, cleanly facility, you did something wrong, that you're sunk, your, your business is just sunk for a while. I would say that is a big impactful thing, but I would totally disagree with that if you have some thought and planning put, to, put together. So if you're regularly asking your uh, customers to review you, um, and it's not just about TripAdvisor, it's about Google, and it's about what I call first party reviews, getting direct feedback. Look, TripAdvisor is still a, a player, um, but if you uh, are getting regular feedback and people are specifically mentioning the nuance of what you've done cleaning wise, you get one negative review, you respond to that thing and you detail out, you know, and people can see that in the context. There's a lot of people that are set off with fear around this. And I think you're going to probably get some bad reviews because people thought that you should all be been, you know, behind a whole face shield while they serve, you know, while you brought breakfast out or something, you know, ridiculous. People are going to have different standards and different uh, fears behind that. And you're probably going to get that show up in some, but if you have regular stream of good reviews from your guests that, um, that are giving that nuance, people are going to discount that negative a review as someone who's um, not as as credible, it's particularly if you respond to that. So it's going to be a real um, benefit to you. It's also going to help you, like I said, stand out and increase competition. Demand is going to struggle for a while. And if there's a relapse um, and there's more lockdowns, then obviously it's going to be even worse. So as things, as competition is increased because demand is down and there's still, at least right now, the same, same amount of properties that are open or will open soon, uh, in, even in a limited way, you got to stand out. Your reputation is how you, how you do that. So, um, okay. I want to, so I want to give you some practical things. I know we got just a couple of minutes here. So hopefully that helps you kind of gives you some, some aspects, um, uh, to, to think about in terms of your reviews. I want to give you some, uh, practical aspects as well. Okay, this, this is not as refined as I'd like it to be. I want to share that, make sure you guys uh, see this and, um, and this. So this is, comes from our services that we provide our reputation. So um, I wanted to show you a live example. I didn't get quite get to put it together, but um, <clears throat> excuse me. So what, what we do with our clients is we ask, we walk them through the process. So I'll walk you through this process and then I'll tell you how you could you know, in a sense, try to replicate it yourself because I don't want to leave anyone feeling like if I don't buy the service. I can't do anything. I don't want that. Um, but I want to walk you through kind of what, what we do and why it's in why our system is, works well. And then, you know, some things about how you can replicate, even if you're doing it yourself. So my favorite, um, approach, um, that we do, we have a couple different ways we approach this, but is what we call ultimate mode for our reputation, uh, product. And that is that we ask someone to give us their feedback and from a zero to 10. And this catalogs their MPS, their net promoter score. It tells us basically it's our word of mouth index of would they promote us to somebody else. So that helps us know, are we meeting that? Um, are we meeting their expectations? And I tell you, folks that focus on service, you're never going to get a perfect score, but they focus on service are near the top. Even if they don't have the perfect property, that service um, and that personal attention makes a big difference in that. So we get their NPS, um, their net promoter score, and then we ask them here, how do you feel about your experience with us? We ask variations on this question. Sometimes we'll ask more survey questions, but we ask for that specific. And this is what's called a first party review. That means how did, what was your feedback from us? And, uh, up to us from your stay and let us know. And as they do that, um, we, they send it directly to us and then they are immediately prompted through this third step to then post that externally. And it differentiates. If they gave us a poor review, um, it's, it's not review gating um, 
because of some certain things or deeper conversation, but um, you, you've probably seen this or experienced this yourself to a certain extent. But if we really emphasize, if it's a positive interaction here, um, that we ask them for a review on key pages, um, key external. So the, the key I wanna leave you with is that you want to capture, I would say in a COVID world, you wanna capture direct feedback first and then ask those people that gave you a really strong positive interaction to then post on Google and TripAdvisor. I would not worry about Facebook. I'll talk about that in a second. So that, that's kind of the takeaway here is get that direct feedback, ask your clients. You can use that in a lot of different ways, even if they don't post to TripAdvisor. Uh, and then if um, it's good, then you wanna ask them, thank you for that review. That was awesome. Thank you for that feedback. Would you share that? You could copy and paste that and put that on TripAdvisor. Here's the link or on Google. Here's the link. Um, so if you're doing that manually, that just means that a guest they send out, don't send them direct, get that feedback first um, because you may be able to have, you know, you may be able to, you'll get more detail. You'll get more people to respond. I, I show you the data. It's amazing how many more people respond to a direct feedback. And then um, when, it, when it's positive, you can ask them to then share externally. External websites for travel. I would not worry about anything other than Google and TripAdvisor. And more and more, I'm worrying less about TripAdvisor and more about Google. Google ho Hotels is, is really key. So externally, get that first party review and then send them to TripAdvisor or Google. And uh, I would not worry about much else. Maybe Facebook if you're killing it here just for a little bit. Um, but everything else is generally not uh, not useful and not beneficial. So that that's kind of number one that I would incur, leave you with is 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 having some type of system to capture in place, whether it's yourself as the system you set that up or use um, some so a tool or service like ours. Um, you you want to have some type of system. Um, the other thing I'm going to leave you with last uh, thing uh, that's practical is share your reviews, promote your reviews in multiple ways. Don't just let them sit on TripAdvisor or on Google. You wanna utilize them, you wanna roll them into how you write about yourself. You wanna utilize them on um, how you describe your amenities and you just wanna plain post them all across your website. So, um, I'm gonna come, I'm using a client as an example here. I'll log out so we don't have that junk. All right, thanks. Okay, okay, excellent. So this is a client doing great on TripAdvisor, great place. Get Make sure that you have your reviews um, on uh, your homepage. And it's significant. We actually should need to expand this for this client because they have so many awesome reviews. Every page, I would encourage you to have a tab on your website that says reviews. People want to know they're going to go to TripAdvisor anyway. They might as well go to your website. On that page, you want to pull in. You can copy and paste from Google, from TripAdvisor, from someone that emailed you. Put it on the site and make sure that it is really, um, really um, compelling. Make make it. Make it huge, make it long. People are gonna walk away with going, wow, um, people love them. And the more detail, the better. You want names, first name, last initial, the date that they left it. You ideally want it, how many stars, the source of that, and uh, the full review. And you can share some that are warts. It doesn't have to be five stars only. We, and this is a little fancier that we set up for clients and it pulls in from TripAdvisor. You can do this all manually if you don't have the money uh, or the desire, you know, to, to do that. But including all of this feedback on a, on a, on a page that says reviews and making that really visible um, is, is really, really key and, and really important. Um, and uh, so that having that page, really great way to place to promote. And here's the last um, one on website that I wanna share. And that is um, all of your pages Pull those, um, pull those reviews. Don't just put them all on the reviews page, but put them on your site in specific areas. So uh, the amenities for this client, 
you know, they're not a fancy place, but they do some things really, really well. And so we specifically tag their reviews, their first party reviews that come directly to us. We are able to tag them and we're able to put them in locations that are the most impactful. So for instance, any review first party that mentions, um, mentions an amenity, we tag it and put it on here and uh, just gives people a lot of uh, context. So when they're on the amenities, it's not just what you say about yourself, it's what uh, other folks say about you. And they can trust that because they can see the date, they can see the stars, they can see the full details on that. You can see um, another client, oh, go back here. Okay, so this is Montford. Um, their, one of their breakfast blog posts, we popped in a details with reviews on, that mentions their, their food and their breakfast. They are known for great gourmet breakfast, we're backing it up with that. So think about in the world where you are getting people commenting on your careful, safe practices, how you deliver breakfast and you are so careful and cleaning and they know that and they trust that, they're gonna mention that. So use those reviews in different spots um, where people are looking, get them on your rooms pages, put them on your booking engine, um, get them into different things, utilize your reputation, utilize, your, that first group of customers, your past guest, utilize them to get the next group um, convinced that you are the absolute best um, to work with. Um, and you have that as the foundation, all the other stuff gets easier and gets sweeter um, from there. So um, the other thing you can do is share on social media. Um, there's a lot of ways to promote, but I encourage you just really integrate reviews and feedback into your, um, do that integrate that back into your uh, website and into your marketing at an at a increased level so that you can really stand out. So hopefully it's really quick. There's a lot more uh, detail to that um, that I can share. I'm going to, I'm preparing uh, uh, more info and we're going to do a whole webinar on that in the near future, but that's kind of um, hopefully some, some really practical things we ended with that, that you can do. Um, with reviews to use that as a foundation to your marketing. So um, my apologies if you've been with me from the first session, we've got a couple different ways that you can um, get connected and um, our free in-depth marketing playbook, um, 6,000 words, it's really detailed, it's meant to be acted on it's, um, and it's meant to actually not just tell you um, what to do, but get it closer to how to do it um, so that we can share that. We've got a couple different things. So I'm gonna pop some of those links in the chat. My apologies if you've been with me from the start, I'm not trying to spam you, just want people that are new. Um, I wanna make sure that they can see and have access to that. The session will be on demand and uh, we will, um, that'll be listed on ALP's website and I can send that to you directly if that's useful to you. So, um, so, Join me and, um, and you know, I want to invite anyone, no pitch uh, strategy session, go to our site, contact me, we'll set up a time to talk. And it's, if you don't come away with two to three things specific for your property after our call, um, I've not done my job. So um, take, up, take me up on that. Um, it'll be with me personally. And, uh, and I'd love to, to talk more about your property in a no pitch, no sales oriented fashion. So, okay. I've talked long enough. Um, any questions on, on that um, aspect, on that session about reputation? Any concerns? Um, throw, throw them at me, uh, anything that you have. So put them in the chat or I can um, unmute you or you can unmute yourself and, and ask the question uh, directly as well. So um, whatever, whatever works best. I know it's we're coming to the end of the day. Give me some tough ones. Um so I'm waiting for, I know you guys have some. <laughs> I know you've got some. 
Um, I did mention mention a couple times we'll have this available <coughs> for you as a recording and we'll be going more in depth. So uh, jump in and join, please. Um, trying to think what else reputation wise. Any question, anything, you know, across the, the gamut, please, please let me know. Uh, Trying to think what I want to want to make sure reputation wise. There's so many little nuggets that uh, with reputation that can be really important. Uh, anyone want to jump? Put in the chat. You know what? Uh, what your current feedback reviews processes like what what you're seeing happen and for those jumping off thank you for your time i appreciate you being with me today and uh, hopefully you had some value okay there's i'll, I'll stick around till <clears throat> everyone has uh, the opportunity to ask a question. Um, I'm going to come back to this slide while I'm waiting, uh, if there's any more. And that is this three-step process um, is really helpful because, you know, whether you implement that with a system or with individually, really helpful because it gives you that feedback in more detail and more nuance than you would get otherwise. People aren't going to always give you some of that negativity um, you know, overall a good stay, but this little thing, they're going to give that to you and that's how you get better. And that's how you can uh, um, really improve the guest experience. And even the best property has those different friction points. I stayed at a B&B in Nashville, actually, for the very first AIHP conference, 2015, 2016, I think it was, and stay with a friend on the B&B and great place, great lady, but man, it was it was loud. There was needed some sound dampening um, in the room that I was in just above me. And so it was creaky and I could hear, you know, uh, the door shook when someone walked on the staircase, like just little things they didn't know because they hadn't stayed there. So this is the kind of stuff that will allow you to reduce those friction points and take people, more people from having a good experience to a great experience. So that's the real gold in all of this. There's a lot of marketing gold, but coming back to that, um, ability to um, <clears throat> understand what your guests really, really think and have that uh, experience as well. There's ways to ask for feedback. Um, we've got options to text and to email and um, a link, you know, a text back program, um, all that stuff. But I would say for lodging properties, if you can put a link, um, if you're doing this yourself, put a link to a, a short form um, in your booking engine and that sends a thank you and thanks them for their stay. And, uh, and then from there you can see all oh, feedback. Then you email them personally and say, thank you. This was awesome feedback. Hey, would you mind sharing on these sites and then email that out to them if you want that <clears throat> to try to implement that two-step process. Um, so uh, there's a lot of benefit to having an automated process, but um, but I know that's not for, for everyone. Okay, all right. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and unless there's any questions, um, shoot those in the chat here uh, before we, but I'll, I'll go ahead and end up, end here and um, just thank you for, for your time to, to join. And uh, I know there was a lot of sessions going on, so I really appreciate you, uh, you all jumping in and being part of that. And uh, uh, it's been great. So uh, have a have a good rest of the conference. I know it goes till five. So I hope you guys have a good, enjoyable rest of that. And uh, I wish I really do wish you all the best in your business. And 2020 is going to get a lot better. I, can, I know it. People stuck at home. They've been stuck at home for a long time. They're ready to travel. Um, I hope it's to your property. So all right. I hope you have a great uh, great rest of your day and rest of your week. Thanks.